Alrighty, I'm going to be in Isaiah chapter 40. You can remain standing, but just uh, read along. And uh, those who are watching online, I know we got a good crowd that watches online right now. And uh, welcome to all of you. Hope you feel like you're right here with us. And uh, so I'm going to be in Isaiah 40. Renewed 2021. <clears throat> Our, uh, the message today is called Our Mission of Renewal. Our mission of renewal. It's a mission we're going to go on this year, and I'll explain that to you. Isaiah chapter 40. These are some familiar passages, verse uh, 25 and uh, through verse 31. And it says uh, this, um, Isaiah 40, chapter, 20, uh, chapter 40, verse 25. To whom then will you liken me, or, or, or shall uh, I be equal, saith the, the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things that bringeth out their host by number and calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might for that he is strong in power not uh, not one faileth why sayest thou o jacob speak o israel <clears throat> my way is hid from the lord and my judgment is passed over uh, from my god Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly uh, fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, thank you for this. Uh, this passage is beautiful, Lord, and uh, there are weary people, and uh, there are people whose strength has failed or is failing, and Lord, we thank you that we can do something about that by your grace, by your power, Lord. Without you, we're nothing, but with you, Lord, we can see you working, and we uh, believe that you can speak to us. We claim your promise. We're two or more gathered in your name, you're in the midst of them. We thank you for a full house. Thank you for everybody who's come today. And we pray that each one, uh, Lord, in every single circumstance, every age, every spiritual age, uh, every ethnicity, Lord, you give us so many people, people who uh, have a hard time even with English. I pray all of them be blessed and you would help them to grasp the truth and speak to their heart. And may this year all of us be refreshed in a great way and uh, speak to us in a great way. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thanks for coming today. We're glad you're here. In 2021, we're going to go on a mission of re uh, renewal. <clears throat> in, this, in this chapter, it's a beautiful chapter, Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah, as we've told you before, is a miniature Bible. It's got 66 chapters, just like the Bible has 66 books. First 39 are judgment, just like the Old Testament. The last 27 are uh, hope, just like the New Testament. And uh, it's, it's written the same way, and, and, and there's so many things in it that are similar. It's beautiful. And so we're getting to chapter 40 here, so we're, we're getting to hope all of a sudden from all the judgment. Israel was being pronounced as you're going to the captivity, you're going to the judgment for your sin. And he says in verse 1, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, um, saith your God. Um, speak comfortably unto Jerusalem, and say unto her, Thou... Um, that her warfare is accomplished and that her iniquity is pardoned for um, <clears throat> uh, for he hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. So he says, look, you have suffered now. Uh, you're going to go through this suffering and then you're going to come out with hope. And he says, speak comfort. And just understand when you have no hope, you can't go on. You'll lose your strength. When you think God can ever forgive you or God can't use you or this problem can't be fixed or whatever, you usually quit trying um, because you, you think that you have no hope. And God says, comfort them. Because they'd suffered, and, and there is consequences to your sin, and you do suffer for a while, but if you, if you repent and turn back to God, uh, you reap what you sow for a while, but God is merciful and will give you all you deserve, and then he will go and help you out of it. And uh, you want to do that. And uh, God wanted them to be comforted. Um, God is going to make everything right, and God... <clears throat> God's glory would be revealed to them, it says in, uh, in verse uh, 5. And the glory of the Lord shall, come, uh, shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And so God's glory is going to be revealed, and God's going to work. He's going to be back with you, and you'll see his presence there. And isn't that great? 
even when you've been in judgment and done wrong and messed up, God can still use you again and bring his presence back in your life. He can do that. And his says, my glory is going to reveal. Now understand, this is a nation under judgment, a nation uh, who would be going into captivity, be, be captured by the nations and, and be, be underneath them and in punishment. Um, <clears throat> That nation, he says, I know everything's kind of burnt and brown and destroyed, but he says, I want you to go, go, to go proclaim it. Go up in the hill and proclaim and see that God is going to do something here. And, uh, and, and, and it's, 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 it's beautiful. Um, uh, verse 6, it says, uh, the, the, voice, um, the voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All, gra all, all flesh is grass and all the, all the goodness thereof is as a flower of the flesh. Um, down to verse 9, it says, O Zion, thou bringest good tidings. Get thee up unto the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings. Lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Uh, say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. I want to say that's one of the amazing things here. He says, hey, get up there, even in the judgment and the trouble, and stand up on the top of the hill and proclaim to the whole city, Behold your God. See God's glory. I want to say that that's going to be one of the things that we have to do. I think this year uh, you have done and the church and Open Door has done a wonderful job of that. We worked very hard at that. This year is we have gone and said in the middle of the tumult and the mess and the disaster, behold, God hasn't changed. God's still great. God can still do mighty works and God's still ready to do great things. I thought of a missionary who, who, who messaged me. <clears throat> Um, that I know, and after we we started the the church in up in uh, up in Anchorage, and he messaged me, and and mo and there's many of them pastors and missionaries, and he said. Thank you so much for sharing about that church. He said, I've been so discouraged. Every church I go to has been discouraged. And he says, I've just been down, down, down. And to see someone showing that God's still working and someone's still doing something for God has meant so much to me. And it's it's been such a blessing. Even if, I don't know about that church and everything's going to happen with it, but I'm just, I, it's meant so much to see somebody showing that God is still at work. And not, and not doing that. And I want to say, one of the things that's that, 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 that you need to do is proclaim in bad times and hard times that God is still great. God still can and God's still able. And, and, and doing that. And, and the biggest thing, because remember God picked our theme for last year about seeing the unseen. Focusing on Jesus. And, and looking in that way. Understand, uh, last year was, was, it was very strange because <clears throat> you don't... The, I, I, it revealed a lot about churches and ministries and pastors. It was a hard year for pastors. Okay? Um, it, it, it was hard. You know, in every church, um, <clears throat> you had in every church, you had people who said, this thing isn't even real, this COVID doesn't even matter, and we need to have church. God wants to have church. In the same church, you said, you would never have church during a pandemic. You don't love people, you'll kill people. <laughs> every church had that. Okay, and, and you had to deal with that as pastor. And you had to understand that if you had services and people got sick and got COVID, they could sue you. And, and you had to deal with uh, shutting down your Christian school and having your things online and converting that to uh, offerings going massively down and has still having to pay all the bills and, and, and helping the missionaries. And, and, and all, the, I mean, it, it was a tough year on pastors. But God kind of burned everything away, and so many things that it seemed like were so important to churches all of a sudden weren't important. And they were, and 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 we, as a church, we were, we were us. <laughs> you know, we're just us and doing our thing and and having a blast and and serving God and seeing God do mighty things. And we weren't sitting here, oh, it's so terrible out there. And we were, we were, but but they said. Hey, because I, I sent a video out at the start of the year. I said, this is why we're, I sent a private video to a bunch of pastors. I mean, a bunch of pastors. Said, this is why we're not going to, we're not going to stop having services. And I just sent to them. I said, you can do what you want. I'm not, I'm not condemning you. Um, if you need to do it, it's fine. Uh, and, and it might be God's will for your church. Our church is not going to have services. I gave, I think, five reasons. Um, and, and, uh, and, and, and we did that. <clears throat> um, they, they called me back 
instantly, how'd it go? How's it going? They're all wondering how it was going and stuff like that. And it's, is the government bothering you and, and, and what's going on? I said, and the funniest thing is we didn't have any cases the whole year. And uh, in, 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 the, in, in, the, in the service, it's crazy. Uh, we, didn't have any, we didn't have any cases at all, which we should have. Just by pure numbers, we said the last week is a miracle of God. We should have had a bunch of cases just because we're in South King County. But as we talked to them, they said, how's it going? How are you staying so encouraged? How's the church? How are people so upbeat? I, I basically had to explain. I said, look, you guys are doing this. Man, so many people have COVID. The government's doing this. Our stupid governor. I can't believe the president's doing this. I can't. And you guys have been doing this the whole time. I said, I've been doing this. What are you supposed to do, Lord? Okay, let's go do it. I said, that was about it. I said, you know, you, 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 you all are focused. You watch the news and get so down at the news all the time. And you're so much into every conspiracy theory and everything is this and that. And you're so much into, into this and politics now. And, every, and, 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 and you're, you're starting to hate and be angry and nasty and you're, all the problems and what can't happen. You can't do this. I said, look, God hasn't changed. I just looked at God, said, what do you want me to do? Okay, you must have a way to do it. In the, in the height, the peak of the pandemic, we went and started church. We went and continued to expand our ministries and see more souls saved than ever and grow and see God working. Why? Because in the middle of it, we kept our eyes on God and focused on him. And he didn't change. Because everything else changes and things, and by the way, can I just tell you, I just want to break the news, you me part of the sermon, America's changed. So understand, and it's not going back. Okay, until Jesus comes, uh, just some things got put into the mindset of Americans, and some things have happened legally, and a bunch of things have happened, and things are going to be different. Okay, and I want you to understand that. Okay, and, and I think you, if you are 50 or older, you already know you're not, you're not, you're not, kids aren't growing up in the same country. Okay, but now things are different than two years ago. And, and that, that's okay. Okay, there's a reason for that. We'll get to that in a little while. I want you to understand that. But here he's saying, hey, get up and proclaim. In the middle of Israel, in the middle of Jerusalem, behold your God. He's good. He hasn't changed. Notice how God just kind of talks about the time frame of thing. He's look, you humans come and go. Your leaders come and go. Your presidents, your kings, your, they all come and go. But God doesn't change. I have something for you that doesn't change here. And he says in, in verse 7, it says, The grass withereth, and the flower thereof, uh, and the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. This has not changed at all. This is still the rock that still works today, and it's still going to get us through this year. It's still just as wonderful ever. As a matter of fact, what it's saying, what's happening right now, it said it was going to happen. That's where we're going. We're going to a one world system. Okay, we're going to go there. We're going to go to one leader in the world. We're going to go to an antichrist leader in the world. We're going to go to an economic system that's a certain way. It's all coming there. And the word of God, he says, look, I know your circumstances don't look like this, but the glory of the Lord is going to shine here and go proclaim the Lord is still in charge and, 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 and kings are going to come and kings are going to go and things are going to happen, but the word of God is going to stand forever. And that's the rock on which we build our lives. Things change, but God's word does not. It's time to praise again. Verse 9, O Zion, thou that bringest good tidings, get thee up unto the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringest... It brings good tidings. Lift up thy voice and strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Uh, say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord will come with a strong hand. It's time to praise Israel. You've got to get back to that. He's big enough to do this, verse 12. Who hath measured the waters in his hollow of his hand. Verse 12 is an amazing verse. It says, God made the universe, and then he wanted to see what he did. <clears throat> It's funny, it says in Genesis 1, when he got all done, he said, and, and God looked on what he had done, and behold, it was very good. God just looked back and said, yeah, I did a pretty good job there. But it said that he measured, he wanted to measure it, and it says he measured the waters, the Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, all the rivers, all the lakes, and he said he measured it in the palm of his hand. And he said, eh, it's about how much water there is in the world. Okay, back on the world you go. 
It's reminding us in this chapter. And then as you looked at how big the universe is, and the universe is big. Remember we talked about that a couple weeks ago? It's, it's at least 13 billion light years one direction. Okay, and, and how massive the entire universe was. When God got done making the universe, it said he measured it with a span. A span is your pinky to your thumb. It's six inches. It's the basic span. God looked at the entire universe and said, eh, let's take a look at that. It's about that big right there. That's how big God is. And he says, I can do this. I can do this thing. I am big enough. I'm eternal. People will come and go. The, the people that have, have, atta have attacked you, people who are, who are ruining your country, they'll come and go. I'm eternal. I, I just set one up, put another down. It's like mowing your lawn to me. It's nothing big. They come and go. Verse 23, it says, uh, That bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the, the judges of the earth as vanity. God can do that. And, and on January 20th, we will have a president, and God will be in charge, ultimately. And God will be able to take him down in the day. God can maybe put him there for a day. They might get saved on January 21st and, first and be uh, 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 the, most, the best president in the history of America. Or God may use them to judge America. God can do whatever he wants. Pray about it and rest in the Lord. And, we, and he says, I just bring one and another. I'm not too worried about these, these people coming. I'm eternal. I, am, I never get tired, it says, verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the, of the, uh, of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. When you saw uh, our theme for this year, understand, see, God isn't, you get tired, you get worn down by it all. How many in the last year, you just got, at some point, you're just like, I am done, I am so drained right now, okay? That, that's, that's, that's what, it, that's, that happens. It happens the strongest one, but God says, it didn't happen to me. See, because when you and I get tired, I say, I'm not even going to try anymore. God says, I'm not tired. I just said, let there be light, and all the planets appeared. All the stars appeared. <laughs> I don't get, I don't, I, I'm not weary. I, I haven't watched the world and say, I'm so sick. I'm so tired. I can't do this anymore. God, I said, I'm not tired. I've got a limited strength. I can do this. And, and he, because he's big enough, because he's powerful enough, because he never gets tired, he says in this chapter, he can heal and strengthen you when you're exhausted. 29, he giveth, power, he giveth uh, power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I've got a few thoughts for you here about this, because we are going to be on a mission of renewal. And the first thought is, life in this world can drain you. <laughs> life in this world can drain you. I found that uh, uh, just when you think, okay, everything's calm. <laughs> or you ever say, now I've got some time to finally, boom. There goes your time. There's always something to drain you. This world can drain you. Look what it says here. He knows that. He knows he gives power to the faint. That means you're exhausted. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint. The young people will run out of strength and energy and, and be weary. And I want to say that it's your soul. We'll read in a second. In, in Matthew chapter 11, he talks about your soul being weary. You, I'm going to tell you, they're, they're, your body gets tired, and, and that's fine. You work hard, and you're tired at the end of the day. That's normal. I want to tell you, the body weary is nowhere nearly as exhausting as a soul being weary. Okay, when your soul is just tired, people have hurt you and wounded you and, 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 and circumstances overwhelmed you and you just feel like you can't go do anymore and you're just drained emotionally, that's even more tiring than physically. And this world will drain you and then spiritually being drained because this world is constantly draining you. 
with the sin, with its promotion of bad, with the, your flesh making you fight and against, striving against sin, as the Bible calls it. And, and you're trying to serve God and be refreshing, and there's this garbage jumps up and, and stuff that argues against the things of God. And everywhere you look and billboards and everything, it's just, it's just bad, and it drains you after a while. And this world, saved, unsaved, it'll drain your energy and make you exhausted. Especially in modern society in the rat race. It'll drain you. It'll drain you. Because the rat race drains you emotionally. You, by the way, you don't know that unless you take like two weeks and go somewhere without technology. Or you go to the third world. And you say, I feel so good. You didn't know your, your, your emotions. Just look. Just the emotions of this week, the ups and downs of this week, the world has gone mad, okay? And just this week, this week would have been something written about the history books of one of the most momentous weeks in the history of America, except for the world is always crazy now. I mean, they marched and broke into the Capitol, and, and, and the week before that was crazy. And, and the emotions of everything going on. I mean, just think about the draining financially. People have worried about things. And some of you, it, it affects you. Um, work will drain you. Stress, stress will drain you. Finances and worries about that. Relationships can drain you. People trying to figure out how to keep their business open. That's tiring. How to collect, how to, how to stay busy, how to pay your employees. When they shut you down, just think of the drain on those people. And you know what a weird thing about it is? I'll tell you one thing. There's two groups of people in society. You got the people who are drained because they're very busy and have a lot of pressure on them. Okay, and that's draining. And by the way, the, the essential people who had to keep going during 2020, they were busier than ever. That's the, all essential people. Look, take, take us in the ministry here. We had to feed more people, counsel more people. There's more depression. There's more people on drugs now. It got busier. People who, um, uh, people who are in medical field, they had to work more. Everybody who had to work had to work more. And then, here's the other thing. You want to talk about exhausting? Here's what's really exhausting. Doing absolutely nothing is exhausting. Bible said that, by the way, slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep. You don't believe me? Try to get a person who's unemployed and does nothing to do something. And they'll say, I can't do it. I'm so tired. You're going, you've done nothing but watch TV all day. You, what do you, you play video games. You're not working. I'm so tired. What are you tired from? I had his appointment yesterday. It was a lot longer than I thought. How long was it? I thought it was going to be an hour. It's three hours. So in two days, you had three hours. Yeah, it drained me. And the ride there, the traffic is really bad. Yeah. Why? Because they're exhausted, because they're lazy. And a lot of people weren't lazy, but because of circumstances, they couldn't work, right? Yeah. And they got exhausted sitting at home because that drains you too. Yeah. It makes your back bad, makes you fat. It's terrible for you. Okay? At least I have an excuse for my bad back and being fat. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, but, <clears throat> but understand, everybody gets drained. And you're going to need to be renewed. The world will drain you. They're, calling, they're, they're, they're getting it now. Let me show you Matthew 11. I'll show you that. Because you can get drained. The world will drain you, and it does. And it, it drains me. And I've always had a lot of energy and, 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 and good genetics and, and everything else and try to take care of myself and... And, uh, and, and take vitamins, do all the things I should do, and I, I, I get it, but I can get drained just like everybody else can. Especially as you get older. You know, when I was a kid, gravity wasn't nearly as strong. Um, when I was a kid, uh, I, I didn't have to sleep as much. And, uh, but, you know, eventually, you know, you get older. And, uh, and, and things hit you more. Um, Matthew 11, Jesus knew this about us. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. 
for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Notice Jesus knows we're going to get exhausted. You will need rest. Parenting's tiring. It, it tires you out. Work can tire you out. Traffic can tire you out. Uh, uh, a fight against the devil tires you out. Um, stress, politics, uh, financial problems, everything can tire you out. Okay? This world can drain you if you let it, but it doesn't have to drain you. Right now, they're, 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 I've, I've followed psychological things for, for, for so many years because I deal with so many people with emotional problems and counseling and things like that. And right now, they're, they're working on, they're getting it. They, have, they haven't labeled it quite yet. They're going to label it soon of COVID fatigue disorder. It's, it's going to... You're la it's going to be there, okay? Yeah. They, it's either going to be, pan they're, they're, right now they're calling it pandemic fatigue disorder or COVID fatigue disorder. Um, they're calling it one of those. It'll end up one of those two. It'll get the label. They'll get a diagnosis. They'll get the drug for it. Okay, that's all going to happen, okay? Uh, the, the, I, pro I guarantee you the pharmaceutical company is already working on it. Okay, and, and, and that's going to happen. And by the way, it has been exhausting. <laughs> what, do, can, what can I do? Do I, to, I have, I guarantee you, I have walked 10 miles just back to my car for getting my mask. <laughs> oh, I do it all the time, all the time. And I'm always in a hurry. I walk up, I get the entrance, <laughs> back to my car. And I do that all the time. But you know, the fatigue of, you know, can I do this? Uh, hey, let's go meet for lunch. You get the restaurant is takeout only. And you're going to sit and counsel with somebody and talk to somebody. Go hang. Just, just all of a sudden, who's going to be president t tomorrow? I don't know. The, 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 is the, are things open? Are they not? Can I have my relatives over for Christmas? Can I not? Why are they keeping, why is this county closed and they haven't had any deaths? And why is, and, and, and why are they, and, and the stress and decisions and, 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 and then trying to, you know, plan a vacation. Where can I go? And, and everything everything drains you. You understand? You can get very drained. And this last year has been, it's been a draining year. A lot of you, do you know your finances weren't as good because of the economy? We've been very blessed at the church because of that. Our church finances have been good because uh, God has blessed us and blessed you, but, but it can all weigh on you. And then you just get frustrated. You're at home too much with, with, with and just being home too much, you just have conflict. And, and, and the, the news and everything else. Oh, for, this world can drain you, and that's important to know because it doesn't have to drain you. Number two, the Lord can revive us. He can renew us. Matthew chapter 11, it says here, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You're heavy laden. you got a big burden on your shoulders. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus says, I know it's draining, but I can give you rest and you can be refreshed. I've had to do this all this entire last year and it worked by God's grace. And we we're able to do that. Isaiah 40, 31, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. A beautiful verse I never really noticed much before, but I like to read it. Psalm 29 and verse 11. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. God is able to give you the rest you need. The re you need. The beautiful words he mentioned like renew. I think of uh, uh, Acts in chapter 3 and verse 19. It says, until the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. God's presence will give you refreshing in your life and make you feel better and make you new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, uh, uh, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are going to become new. The Lord can give us rest. And remember, he said, look up. Behold your God, because I'm saying this because I am not saying things are going to get better. Part of the sermon today is we're going to be on a mission of restoration because things are going to get worse and we have to be refreshed. And it will not happen accidentally. It won't happen accidentally. 
it's not going to be easy. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, Know this, in the last days perilous time shall come. We know during the tribulation, the, uh, in the tribulation, it's the worst time in history, but he's talking to Timothy. Timothy's not going to be in the tribulation. He says, Know this, in the last days tribu- uh, uh, perilous times shall come. So going into the end time, look, the Antichrist just can't take over the whole world in one day. The system has to get set up. And bad times are going to come toward the end. And, and, and look, What's happened in the last year is you kind of got you kind of got two groups of people here. You got people who are like, you know what? People die. You know what? You got to live your life. And you know what? You take risks sometimes. And you got that kind of people. But then you got most people who are saying, I'm scared. Somebody take care of me. I'll do whatever you say. Yeah. And understand, it crossed a line where so many people are like that, they are going to let the world system come in and an international government so we don't have these pandemics anymore. And so when the, when the economy collapses, they can say, we got a world economic system. We don't have the dollar and the yen and, the, and all these things uh, fighting and competing. We're going to have one currency. You know what? Currency caused a lot of these problems. We're just going to forgive all the debt and give everybody part of the system. We're going to stop crime because we're not going to have, because by the way, crime's increasing right now. Crime's going to increase massive. Okay, I was going to tell you that if, if, if they do what they say they're going to do with the economy, the economy's not going to be pretty. Okay, we already spent way too much money and the Federal Reserve started to talk like we're in some trouble here. I mean, you know how much debt we went into last year? We always go into an unacceptable and ridiculous amount of debt, but now it's just like, here's money. And, and it, it's all going to collapse. Okay, I don't know if it'll be 2021. It's going, we're in trouble. Crime's already already doubling in many cities. And 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 I, really good idea. Let's get rid of police uh, when crime's increasing. I got a great idea. And 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 by the way, a lot of people who do that don't know criminals like I do. I spend a lot of time with criminals. And I just want to tell you, can I just tell you something? There's bad, dangerous people who don't need a, a psychologist. They need to be away from people. I love those people. I hope they come to Christ. I visited the murderers in jail and everybody else. I, I don't say I don't compassion. I work with them. Because I work with them, I know they're dangerous. I know that a little talk is not going to stop them. It's not going to stop them. A uh, greater force will stop them. Okay? And this, or, or they get born again and, come and start serving God. I'm just telling you, it's going to be draining and you and I have the ability to not be drained and to be renewed, and everybody's going to need that. And we've got to be on this mission of renewal because perilous times are coming. I, and I consider and be an optimist, but I pay attention to things, and I kind of, I've been calling these things right for a little while, okay? Let me show you. You got that video up there? I'm going to show you a little video, though. Here's the good news. They that wait upon the Lord, just put it up there, don't start it. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The Bible says an interesting phrase, it says they shall mount up with wings as eagles. God chooses to use eagles as an example of what we can become and we can get strength from. It says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. God will give you wings like eagles. They shall run but not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I want to say God chose to use eagles for a reason. He said we would mount up with wings as eagles. The wings of eagles are important. As you see this eagle here, you notice the massive wings both in length and in, in, in the width of them. They have these massive wings. Understand, eagles don't get exhausted because eagles are not flapping. I go ahead and push play. That's what eagles do. The Bible says we soar like eagles. Eagles soar. They don't flap. Because you know why? Because they have those wings, the air pushes them up. And we have the wind of the Holy Spirit. But we got a bunch of hummingbird Christians. (laughs) I'm so stressed out. I can't get everything done. I'm so tired. 
God says, you wait on me, you serve me, you stay close to me, you soar. You can get rest for your soul. And, and God says, if you, if you wait on me, you can do that. When you're looking down here and, and you're stressed out, you can soar above the world. And the wind is under your wings and you're soaring. He will give us wings like an eagle. He will, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew the strength. No wonder Jesus says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Our guys who are in here who go to the, the training and, and the ladies who, who go to the ministry training, I gave you a handout about the pastor's pastoral stress statistics. Actually, I think I have it. I might have my pulpit here somewhere. And pastors are all unbelievably stressed out. They're so tense. They're, 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 their levels of stress and their levels of frustration and everything else are so high, they're not sustainable. And that's why most people don't make it over 10 years in the ministry anymore. And here I am, goofing around and having fun and laughing the whole time in the ministry. But you know the reason is, is because I don't try to build a church. God builds churches. And I let him do it. I'm not out there stressing myself out. Well, I need more people. I can have more people here. We don't have this. What about the finances? Eh, it's your church, Lord. They're stressed out. If I preach this, they're going to get so mad. I say, Lord, what do you want me to preach? It's your church. What if they get mad at you? Huh. I'm soaring up here. Let the, let the dogs yip. You, you, don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to live in this stressed out society. What if Biden becomes president? And Biden will be president. God will still be on his throne. What if Trump stays president and takes over the coup? Then Trump will be president. I'll float around. I already know persecution's coming. I already know that. Look, the hate speech thing is already gonna is already gonna get us in trouble. They're already doing that. Right now, the real estate, entire real estate union now is 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 say is saying we're gonna pull your license if you if you have any hate speech anywhere. In your private life, in your house, you talk about any kind of hate speech, and hate speech is not defined. You say homosexuality is a sin, you might lose your license. That's, this stuff's coming. Okay, this stuff's coming. The church that took money from the government, which we didn't, gee, there's no free lunch. <laughs> it just, it's coming. Okay, you owe us. And understand that 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 we're we're going in and 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 they're they're redefining things, and we're going to be facing some hard times. The church, because we're a strong standing church, the, the evangelism thing, uh, and 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 it's all going somewhere. Okay, we've got a mentality that the we're going to go towards the mark, and the way people look at the, each other. If you you're evil, if you don't do this. That's going to happen with the mark. I'm not against vaccines. I think I, I'm not, I, I, I'm, I hope they help. I hope this one helps. But you can tell the way they're talking about this thing. It's preparing us that you better be able to prove you have this in order to go into these stores. It's, it's, not, it's not the mark of the beast. It's not. I'm telling you that. It's not. It's just I'm telling you there's a mentality, a thing that's coming. We're going a certain direction. I'm not against I'm not against you getting the vaccine. If you think it's good and you studied it out and you look at that, fine. I'm just saying we're, we're going somewhere and we are going to be in a situation where we need to be able to be renewed and soar. Because number, point number three is really the message. Point number three is our job in 2021. Now understand this. Usually we're going to do this and this and this. Here's our job. Our job is to be renewed because everybody's going to be drained and to, and to take that to, to a drained world. Let me explain that to you. The world is going to be going into, I mean, look, the kids, I've talked to the kids who are sitting at home trying to do school. What is that? First of all, you don't know this, easiest thing in the world to cheat. You Google, you're on your computer, you Google every answer. 
would have wish I could have gone to school, but now. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 there's that. But there, there's no normal interaction. <laughs> it's not healthy. By the way, uh, just being indoors where most people catch COVID. But there, there, there's a, there, there, it's, it's hard and it's depressing. People are drained. People are, are drained with uh, po politics and finances. And, and, and they're, they're frustrated. And they miss family. And they miss things. And all this stuff. And, and it happened. And okay. But I'm just saying people are drained. And they're, they're going to stay drained. But they can't function that way. Suicide. Depression. Um, family splitting up, drug addiction, all this is increasing and going to increase. We have to be the answer. But the only way to do that is for us to be renewed. And then take it to the world. I'm going to show you this in the Bible. I'm going to go to a bunch of verses. I'm going to show you in the Bible. There are people who are refreshing. People who refresh you. Romans 15. Romans 15. And verse 32, watch this. There are certain people who will refresh you, and we've got to be that. We've got to go out there because the world's, the, the world's drained, and people are drained. By the way, our churches had to do this for their churches. We've had to show churches it's okay. Hey, God's still on his throne. It's good. God's still working. God's still doing some things. We've had to do this with other ministries to show them that. And, and you've done it with other Christians who are just depressed. We've got to do that now. That's our mission this year is to be renewed and to go on a mission of renewing people and helping people who are hurting and empty and let them see someone who's glowing and good and happy and refreshed because it's not a pretty world out there all the time. Romans 15, verse 32, and it says this, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God and may with you be refreshed. Isn't that beautiful? We'll refresh each other and certain people refresh each other. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 18. This is beautiful. Um, verse, actually, verse 17. I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaicus, for th uh, that which is lacking on your part have they supplied, for they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore acknowledge ye them that are sick, that are such. You know, one of the fun, the fun things about this year has been every single sun Sunday has been a blast. I mean, crazy Sundays up top where the technology didn't work, every Sunday inside here, the early services, late services, we've, we've moved and done everything and been packed and been empty and been here and there and everywhere and done all kinds of services. The whole time, I've never come to this pulpit going, folks, there's nothing God's still on his throne, but you know, I don't know if I'm going to make it another week. Because I've not been that way. Why? Because... Because you know what? Because God has refreshed me, and you've been able to leave church feeling better. Because people can refresh you if they've been with God and they're refreshed. Look at that. He says, for they have oft refreshed my spirit. Paul? They refreshed Paul. So Paul needed refreshing. Paul needed refreshing. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 13. I'm going to illustrate this in a sec. Give me a minute and read a few more verses, and I'll, I'll, I'll illustrate it to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 13. Therefore we are comforted by your comfort, yea, and exceeding more joyed we with, the, with uh, the joy of Titus, because his spirit was refreshed by you all. Here's Titus, a pastor, refreshed by them. And uh, they refreshed him in 1 Timothy. You notice that? It's saying over and over, or 2 Timothy. These people are refreshing people. Certain people are refreshing. Yes, the word of God is refreshing. The presence of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, being in God's presence, waiting on the Lord, you get refreshed. But also a big part of it in this sermon, because and, and, we're going to talk about refreshing, we're going to talk about renewing this year. We're going to have several sermons. But the sermon today is we need to be on a, on a ministry of, re, we need to be on a mission of renewing, of renewing people. And refreshing people. Second Timothy and chapter uh, 1 and verse 16. The Lord have mercy in the house of Onesiphorus, uh, for he hath oft refreshed me and not, was not ashamed of my chain. Uh, one more verse, Philemon. Notice how these people in the Bible who refresh people, that's what we need to go on a mission of being this year. 
I'll need you to refresh me. You will uh, uh, need me to refresh you. What are we looking at? Philemon? Right, four Hebrews. Philemon. And uh, chapter 1 and verse 7. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Okay. So, got a phone here. Phone's getting drained. Why? One charger, two people. And, uh, and, uh, and so who gets the charger? The wife. And, uh, and so uh, my phone's getting discharged, okay? You're just like that. You go out into life and the, the, the person at work is telling bad stories. The other person's cussing the person out. Your, your people, two people you love are fighting with each other and don't like each other. Uh, you, you, you have a bad day at work. Traffic's bad. Your engine light, check engine light comes on. Uh, you're tempted to, to do something bad and, 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 and things come in your mind. And, and just all day long, you're spiritually and emotionally getting drained. Okay, that's, that's your phone. There's heavier use days. You know, some days your phone lasts three days. Some days it lasts a day depending on your age. <laughs> it's amazing. Older people's phones don't discharge as fast for some reason, and I'm not sure why. Um, but, uh, but depending on, 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 on circumstance, your phone lasts longer, and, 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 and your phone gets drained. Okay? So, what do you do? You plug it into the wall. I don't have any plugs up here. Plug it into the wall. I got one over here. Plug it into the wall. Isn't this a cool cord? You know why I have this ugly cord right here? Somebody gave me this cord because my office is basically Grand Central Station, and anybody who needs a cord goes in and grabs mine and I never see it again. But this cord right here is so ugly. It's so ugly that no, none of my kids or none of the office workers will steal my cord. I love this cord. You need to borrow that one? You just go to... So here's my cord, and I go over and I plug it into the wall here. I got a cord in there. Where's that plug? Plug's over here. And I plug it in here. And what am I going to unplug? Lights. And I plug it in here. And now, there we go. Plug in my phone, it's charging. Okay? That is you getting with God, spending time with Him. Get in the word, yoking up with him, that means doing God's work, going to work with the Lord. You get up in the morning and say, Lord, you know, I'm going to my job at, you know, the pizza joint, but Lord, I'm going there for you. You gave me this job. I'm going to work for you. Lord, you make me a minister. Help me you be used by you. And you yoke up with Jesus and you in a yoke, like a, two oxen pulling together and Jesus pulling with you. And you're yoked up and you're getting charged and you're spending time with the Lord and you're getting filled with the Spirit. And you're asking for the Holy Spirit's power in your life and the Spirit's flowing in your life and you're getting charged. The wind's under your wings, all those things. And you're getting charged. But then, and then you get around people who charge you up. Okay? And you're getting charged. And you go to church and you, get, you hear a good sermon once every year or so. And, uh, and you get all charged and you are charged up. But then guess what? You go out and you start going throughout the day and all of a sudden it starts getting drained. Okay? It's not plugged in anymore. Okay? Now it's not plugged in. And you're not necessarily in your prayer time. You're not necessarily, you know, now you're at work and you're hearing a bunch of bad things. All of a sudden you're with somebody who drains you. You know, draining people, right? Okay? And they're draining you. And all of a sudden, you hear some bad news of something that depresses you, and you're getting drained. But you're not there. But here's the thing. This is us. You know what this is? It's a portable charger. So it's four little dots. So we can't be plugged into God right then. And here's an unsaved person, and here's somebody at work, and here's a depressed Christian, and they're not plugged into God, so they're not charged. So you know what we got to do? This thing got plugged into the wall and got charged. This is not the electricity, right? It charged, plugged into electri in electricity, okay? This is the average person who is not plugged into God. 
they don't know God. They don't know the Bible like you do. They don't know the Lord. They're not plugged into him. So you know what you're going to do? You're going to be refreshed and they're going to come and plug into you. But you got your strength from God. You are plugged into God. And now these other churches who are struggling, they didn't quite have it figured out. They went and got refreshed by us. Okay, your, your co-worker, your unsaved relative is going to be watching you and you need to be plugged into God and you get your energy from God and are plugged into him and now they come and see what you have. And God can use you on a mission being charged to lift up the people who aren't charged because people are drained, people are exhausted emotionally, physically, spiritually, and they need, would need someone who's been plugged into God, which this thing was, I take this here, and I take this here, I switch this around, this plugs me, this plugs into here, this plugs into here, and we put this in the wall, and now that charges this, and this is you. You go plug into God. God's energy goes into you. God's renewal goes into you, and now you are going out there because Jesus needs hands and feet, and now you're going and you're showing the world who is miserable and hopeless because their hope was on the economy or whatever else. And they are now seeing you with joy and you're going to encourage them. You're going to lift them up. You're going to see people who are down and people who are struggling. And you are going to be floating on the air. You're soaring. Because you have that. Our job is to be one of these people we read about that they oft refreshed me. They refreshed my spirit. They refreshed me when they came unto me. Where Paul is saying, I was drained. I was going through all this stuff, but they had been with God. And God really refreshed them and renewed them. And then I came around them and I was just tired and drained. And boy, the devil been pounding me for a while. And I've been in prison and jail and lie, lied about. And they came and whew, I feel better. And that's what you need to be. This year, what we got from, from the Lord is we at Open Door need to be the ones who renewed daily and then taking that renewing to people who are going to be drained. That will be part of getting the gospel out. This is the job for our church. Now, here's a real important thing about this. God knew God knew where we're going to be someday. Look at Hebrews 10. As we got closer to Jesus coming, and we are getting closer, everybody. Used to be you could look real hard and see little dots and see little things and see little clues. Now it's just blaring at you. Jesus is coming. Everybody. Used to be you'd have a lot of people like myself who would say, yeah, it's not necessarily a sign. It could be any time, but it could be years. You know, every single thing isn't a prophecy fulfillment. Now everybody is saying, we're getting close now. We're pressing toward the end. In end of verse 25, it says this, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. It says, as you see the end coming, you will need to do something. Hebrews 10, 25 says, not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. It says, look, as it gets closer to Jesus coming back, you will need to be at church more. You know who else? Isn't that amazing? God saw that. And he said, you will need church more than ever. By the way, read the book of Acts. When they were in trouble, when they were persecuted, when they suffered, the church gathered together. Acts 4, Acts 12. Just read all around Acts. You'll find that. When bad times came, the first thing they did is went to their own company, it's called. They went to their own company. They went to the church and they gathered together and they met together and prayed and were together. And we will need church more than ever. Why? Because we got to get charged. We got to get renewed. Because the world will be more draining. So we'll need church more. Guess who else knows that verse? The devil. He knows scripture. And guess what? Right now, when Christians need church more than ever, guess what? Church is closed. 40%, they say, the number right now, Barna is saying, 40% of Christians in America have left the faith since COVID started. She's not going to church. And they're being drained and they're, they're drained. And by the way, you want to kill a battery, just so you know this, 
doesn't matter your car battery, you drain it. If there's a little bit of juice left, it doesn't kill the cells. If it's completely drained, cells start being destroyed. Okay? And the devil has got the churches closed. Right when they're supposed to be doing more church than ever. And so he's, he, he's, he's, he knew that. And this is what we got to do, is the churches are going to be uh, have a harder time. Uh, they're going to be under persecution, all those things. And, 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 and we, we see that this is what's, what's happening. And we've got to be in church to get charged. We've got to be around encouraging people. And here's the thing. The church has to be a place where you get refreshed. Because here's the thing. Back to, back to the phone. <clears throat> There's certain things that drains the phone more, right? Certain things use more batteries, okay? Flashlight, I think I have one of those on here, okay? Make sure everybody's awake, okay? The, that, that drains it more, a couple things. So sometimes life, some circumstances drain you more and you need more Bible, you need more church time, you need more pe good people around you, okay? Certain people drain you more. Ready? So here's you. You have to stay charged because once I plug into here, it starts draining. Certain things are more dead are going to take more out of you, right? A couple, just a clue about life. If you go to charge someone and you plug into them and they drain you, it's okay. You can go get charged again as long as they're getting charged. There are people who drain you, but don't get charged. Stay away from those people. But they need to get, no, they will not charge. Their battery is shot. And all they do is drain you. I don't mind you being drained to fill. But to be, there are people in your life you have to get away from. Proverbs talks about them. Get away from them because all they do is drain you. There is no benefit to that relationship. You don't have energy anymore to go plug in and charge someone who needs it and will get charged. Okay? And then plug into people who charge you. And it's important you do that because you've got to go out on a mission of being renewed and renewed in God's presence and renewed in God's power so you can go and refresh people who the devil is going to take and drain and make them miserable and empty and hopeless and not want to live anymore and just throw up their hands. I don't want to try to raise my kids. It's too hard in this world. I don't want to try to go to church. I don't want to serve God. I'm too tired. I'm too weak. I just, it's too hard to struggle. We've got to go out and lift those people up. I don't want to live anymore because they're drained and all their fight and life and juice has gone out of them and when you're charged you can go and give them some life and refresh them but you gotta be fresh every day the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 day by day I don't know if God can use me you know where I got this thing from and I'll finish you know where I got this guy from? Eddie Bauer. Only Eddie Bauer thing I'll probably ever own. I got this from? A drug addict who went in our bus, did drugs on our bus, left the drugs in our bus, and forgot their charger. <laughs> and there was worse things I can't mention that were on the bus also than the drugs. And I went in the bus and went to clean it out and said... I'm keeping this thing. This is my money. This is my wages. <laughs> and now, I've taken this thing overseas with me to charge things like that. If this thing was used by a drug dealer, okay, and now it's being used by God to teach you something and being used to charge the church's phone or something I need to, technology I need to use overseas, God can use you. God can use you. But you got to stay refreshed because it's not going to be like a typical life anymore. I'm, good things are going to happen. I understand good things will happen. The world's not going to end tomorrow unless Jesus comes. Uh, I think, and then it's seven years of mess. I, I'm saying there's going to be ups and downs. 
and and Jesus can come in 10 years if he wants to. I'm just saying 2021 did not change things. But you've got a God who can charge you and keep you joyful and keep you peaceful and keep you victorious. And you can go shine that light out there in a dark world and you can charge people and refresh them. But you've got to stay renewed. You've got to get over your, your past, over last year, and just say, you know what? I'm good. I am and get in God and really get start soaring. And quit doing everything in your own strength and let God help you and stay near God. Quit living a drained life. And, and live a life of, of, of fulfillment, of helping people. And, and we at Open Door, I don't know that a lot of other churches are going to be renewed and refreshed. I Maybe, I hope, I hope, I hope. But we have got to be missionaries all around here to your relatives, to your neighbors, to your coworkers, to your friends. Don't get drained and then go give somebody else renewal. Because the theme this year is renewed. Renew. We see renewed spirit, renewed life, renewed strength, renewed path, renewed mind, renewed heart. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mound up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the chance to preach your word today. I pray that we would be renewed. Lord, we wouldn't be circumstances of the earth, but uh, uh, circumstances of you. Just like in Isaiah 40, Lord, they were, they, they, you could do it. You made the universe. You never change. Your word never changes. You could, even the youths will uh, uh, be weary and faint, but they that wait upon the Lord. I pray we wait upon you. I pray that we would do your work and go out and refresh people, and I pray we'd be renewed daily. I pray that if last year was awful for us or if we are, uh, 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 we've had a bad life or whatever we've had bad, Lord, we would get renewed and serve you. Thank you. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Help us, Lord, to serve you and, be, and refresh us and renew us so we can go renew other people and take your life to other people. In Jesus' name, our heads are bowed.